Uh, hi, everyone. You probably know us. I'm Mark Davenport. I'm here with Heidi Hanlein. Yes, and we were so looking forward to join you in Hungary. For us to come to the conference is really such a highlight in our lives. And finally, we got a diagnosis. And it is cancer, and it is centered in the lungs, evidently. But it also has metastasized to some other parts of the body. And we can uh, expect a, a, a decent recovery uh, if things go well. So I'm sorry about that. But So now for us is the challenge mm -hmm. to walk our talk. Now, it's not necessarily aging uh, connected. It, people can get ill also before. But definitely with aging, it's more likely that you get ill. And so how do we meet this challenge in a good way, in a, let's say, a second tier way, <laughs> not to lose the hope and even embrace the uncertainty of, you know, you don't know how it ends. And maybe we will be separated and <laughs> in this life yeah. and maybe before. Hi, Mark. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. So <clears throat> we want to start by, you know, asking you to keep in mind uh, a couple questions. We're talking about getting older, you know. At some point, probably we all thought, oh, shit, we are. You know? What does that mean to you to get old? What are your fears? What are your hopes? What is it, your experience with loved ones who have gotten old? would die, you know? How does that fit into your view? What do people in general think about it? What's the world think about death? What's your culture think about death? All of these things can enter into us and get really busy with our minds. So I retired as soon as possible. <sighs> Finally. <laughs> in about three or four months, I realized that I had been really good at waiting, but I didn't know shit about retirement. <laughs> I really didn't. And it became a spiritual crisis, which fortunately quickly led me to some great teachers, and I would probably put the top of the list there, uh, Ken Wilber. And I learned, I learned the brief history of everything, and that allowed me to use that retirement time in a very fruitful kind of way. But it, you know, when we look back, you know, through through the the, uh, the the colors, shall we? The history of the colors, if if I can use that shorthand. You know, starting at beige. You know, what does getting older mean at beige? You know, well, we don't know because nobody got old then, so to speak. Very few people really reached a great age. And then we go you know, to the tribal stage. You know, and this was a huge improvement. And people had the security and the comfort and support of people they were related to or that they knew quite well. And people could get old because there was food, <laughs> you know, and there was knowledge. And the elders became respected and important people in those communities. But then at some point, as we all know, Somebody said, I'm not listening to those old farts. I'm going to do what I want. And the hell will you? Good day. I'm Lorraine Lopesha from Johannesburg, South Africa. I met a lot of the people that possibly are at the conference when you came to South Africa. It's the integral conference last year. So you know that I'm should I say elderly? I'm not as young as I used to be, and I have to have medical help at times. But it's a joy to come and talk to you and to talk about aging. And aging is a very interesting part of life. I'm still learning. I'm still wanting to learn. There's no such thing that if you get to that age, 
you get to the retirement age, it means your brain stops. It means you've now got leisure time to study, which is what I did. I got my PhD at age 83. So no matter what age you are listening to me, please start learning. You're at the conference. Absorb everything. Take the papers home. Reread them. Do all the things. Thank you for listening. Have a lovely time. My name is Ashton Applewhite. I am a writer and activist against ageism based in New York. For me, the answer to what is conscious aging has both a political and a personal component, which of course we know are two sides of the same coin. The political piece is that ageism takes root in denial of the fact that we are aging, that everyone wakes up a day older. So um, ideally we would acknowledge and even embrace the fact that we are moving through life instead of getting caught up in denial and self-loathing, which is not good for us, whereas the opposite is very definitely good for us. The personal piece I would say has to do with uh, the awareness that life is short, that our time on earth um, is a gift and to work to be able to inhabit that present moment as fully as possible, which it does seem most of us get better at as we age simply as a function of the way aging itself affects the healthy brain. Hello, I'm Monia from Vienna. I have been active in the integral scene for 20 years. And uh, I would like to talk about a taboo topic of conscious aging, sex. Uh, which is different for men and women. Uh, the development of Viagra speaks a clear language, but women, when their body isn't as attractive as it used to be, women turn towards the essence of the other person. And I would recommend it to every woman who has a need for this and enjoy Eros and enjoy the other person. Hello, I'm Edward Kelly from Ireland. And uh, I've written a number of articles for the Integral Leadership Review. And I'm involved with Heidi in Conscious Aging because I set up something a few years ago called the Third Act in Life. And this was, to me, a response to human longevity and uh, the opportunity to really grow and expand and to become not just older, but older, wiser, perhaps to become an, an, an elder in that traditional sense. So I'm delighted to participate in this and wish you all well. Hello, I'm Jane Duncan Rogers of Before I Go Solutions. We help people to make good end of life plans so that it protects their family from the distress, the confusion, the possible arguments and the awful administrative hassle that happens when somebody dies and they haven't made a plan. We're based in Scotland, we work internationally and conscious aging for me is that when you actually have the courage to face the fact that you are going to die one day, by looking at the end and determining how you ideally would like that to be, you, as a bonus if you like, bring yourself to living more fully right now and getting really clear about what it is that you want and how you want your last years to be, whatever that might be. Hello, my name is Susan Farling, and I'm in Victoria, British Columbia. For the last 30 years or so, I've been a counselor and psychotherapist in private practice. I'm now uh, coaching people through their retirement transition in a program called Retirement Evolution. One of my interests and in fact passions is helping my clients identify the pervasive nature and potentially devastating impact of ageism in our culture and their own internalized ageism. And when a client, I believe, and when I can identify, when we can identify our internalized ageism and challenge it and release it, we have the opportunity to move forward in our lives with much more vitality and creativity and confidence and compassion and open-heartedness and move into 
um, more spiritual development where we identify more with oneness rather than with the singular self. And in my view, that is what conscious aging is. Hello, I'm Zara Altair. I live in the Pacific Northwest in the United States. In my 70s, I practice every day to do what I need to stay healthy and work within the physical limitations of aging. The mind and the body work together. For me, conscious aging is the moment-by-moment -moment daily practice of thinking and doing to the best of my limited abilities to realize my potential. Live it. I'm Sue Brightman. I've thought a lot about this topic of conscious aging. My work is primarily now with women over 50, and I interviewed 100 women in their 50s, 60s, and 70s. And uh, 100 interviews later, and living my own life, having reached my late 50s and, and looking ahead and saying, you know, what now? I now find myself not relating to the phrase conscious aging. Rather, I think what's up for us is we're further becoming. And we're really living out a new narrative right now. We're the ones laying down the tracks for what this new stage of life is all about. So for me, bottom line, how are we further becoming? How are we being lived by evolution itself? And how are we players in our own um, living and composing and creating the lives we want and what it actually can and does look like at this new stage of life. I'm Firehawk and I live in Northern California in the US. And my connection to this topic is that I'm a teacher and a guide of earth wisdom in today's world. What conscious aging means to me is a shared process of self-knowledge that's applied in the world in a way that gives our hearts the wings that we need to rise above the noise of our world and to do precisely what it is that we came here to do for the good of everyone else. Thank you. Hello, my name is Anne Roberts and I host a video interview series called The Act of Wisdom Inquiry, Shared Perspectives on Elderhood. And my view on conscious aging is held in our wheel of act of wisdom. In the west of the wheel is my well-being, where we nurture all aspects of our wellness. In the south of the wheel is my development, where we continue to learn and grow as we age. In the north of our wheel is my vocation, where we live our unique evolutionary purpose. And then in the east of our wheel is my freedom, where we adventure with all possibilities. I'm wishing you a great conference. Bye. Hello, I'm Paul Smith. I write books such as Integral Christianity, The Spirit's Call to Evolve. And my most recent book is Your God Big Enough, Close Enough, You Enough. My friend Richard Rohr wrote the foreword, and my friend Ken Wilbur wrote the afterword to that one. I also write weekly for the Integral Christian Network website. I live in the United States, and I'm 82 years old. When it comes to aging, I have found that conscious aging at its best is a spiritual process. My spiritual path is following Jesus, who practiced what I call the three faces of God. This is not the traditional trinity, but much more. I can't tell you how much it means to me, the older I get, to have a face of God that is big enough for my mind, a face of God that is close enough for my heart, and a face of God that is me enough for my deepest identity. I'm not quite sure how to respond because in many ways my attitude to conscious aging is no different than my attitude to everything else, which is that um, being conscious for me means increasing my bandwidth of awareness and because I'm a spiral dynamics geek it means being aware of all the aspects of that and particularly of the beige purple and 
red levels and what those have to say about the nature of our mind-body relationship. For me, bringing consciousness to aging actually means really getting inside what the nature of uh, the information world and my relationship with it and the way that I create reality, the way that that uh, has the potential to impact who I am and who I will be in the future and how long I will uh, live um, in, in health for. Hello. My name is Dorothy Stern Kucha. I live on the Oregon coast in the United States and I'm 77 years old. And for me, conscious aging has become a process of dismantling old and limiting beliefs and behaviors and allowing myself to come fresh and more clear in terms of embracing the life that I have and the future that I anticipate with great relish. Hello, I am Raquel Torrent from Spain. I'm a psychologist and integral therapist since more than 33 years. And my idea of conscious aging has to do with uh, age with grace and elegancy, which means, for me <laughs> at least, to use all that uh, aging gives, which is a lot of wisdom and a lot of uh, conscious peace, then to do it elegantly with this uh, gracefulness that age gives, where we can then rest in this wisdom and forget about the grumpiness and the impatience and all those things that make us ugly. I'm Karen Voorhees. I live in California. I have been doing integral practice and daily meditation for nearly 40 years. And in those years, I have learned one thing that is more consciousness is always better than less consciousness. By now, I have had the experience of helping run seven home hospices for dying relatives and friends and much end-of-life care. And this has been one of the most powerful guidelines of my life, that when there's nothing else you can do for someone, you can always be there with your full presence, your attention. And my experience has been that our Buddha nature, our true selves, can blossom in the most unexpected and beautiful ways. My name is Dr. Tony LaMotta. I'm from Sarasota, Florida in the United States. And my work for the last 10 or so years has been all about conscious aging. I help people through four major processes in order to really age consciously. The aging process can be a time of great spiritual growth when it's done consciously. That means deliberately facing any hidden fears and discovering the hidden dreams and goals that still can be fulfilled. It means facing whatever is happening in your life and deciding how you want to step into your future so you can live your life as fully as possible. The answers are already within you. <laughs> 